Hello and welcome to our 11th and final edition of UTA Spotlight Spring 2017. I'm Christian Guardado. Today we'll talk about how some students choose not to take a break during the summer vacation time period. We'll give you an exclusive interview with Jalen Jones and we'll give you the latest details with Maria Nojosa's visits to campus to talk about women's importance role in today's society. Thank you for joining us. This is UTA Spotlight. With summer around the corner, most students choose to rest and simply take a break from school. But for others, they must have to keep on working on their future careers. Maritza Esquivel has more. Getting into medical, pharmacy, or any other health profession school is ambition of many students. However, the journey itself is not so simple. Like I'm spending all of the summer studying for my PCAT, but I'm also taking summer school. Applying to health profession schools is similar to applying to college all over again. It requires preparation and determination. Students must take a test that pertains to their type of health school that they want to attend. For example, the MCAT for medical school or PCAT for pharmacy. They must also become involved in extracurricular activities and even gather hours of shadowing a doctor. According to a survey by the Association of American Medical Colleges, 45% of medical admission offices say that the MCAT scores usually make up the decision on whether an applicant passes to the second phase of the application process. Usually I recommend them to do it during the summer and try to take it their junior year so that they have time to retake it just in case they need to for a higher score. A high GPA is another factor that plays an important role in the application status. The medical schools are highly competitive as far as GPA goes, and that's what they look at first and foremost. So usually I have students try to get as high a GPA as humanly possible, but that puts a lot of stress on them. Due to the complexity of the application process, some students decide to take time off after graduation. I'm glad that I took the year off because it gives me time to focus solely on applying to schools. Whereas if I did it while I was still in school, I would have been too stressed out. The health profession route is not always the finish line for many students. There are other alternatives that exist, allowing students to continue to satisfy their ambition in the health field. I have some students who, if they didn't get into medical school, they went into like medical technology or something like that, so that they're still in the lab, and, but they're still like in the healthcare field. Um, so just because you didn't get into medical school, it doesn't mean it's like the end of the world. There are other options. Maritza Scavell, UTA News. Once again, with summer creeping right around the corner and the school year coming to an end, some college athletes' careers are also ending. Camille Connor sat down with Jalen Jones to discuss his future after college. Off season, he put so much time in his game, and it's just like, man, I want to be just like that dude. He's about basketball in school. And that's what I kind of picked up from him. Just uh, work hard and everything will fall in place. Jalen's the ultimate uh, blue collar, hard working, tough guy. Uh, I've been running, staying in shape, uh, watching a lot of film of myself, seeing what areas I can get better in. You know, I'll walk in here 7.30 in the morning. He's already in there shooting. Uh, works extremely hard on his game. I think that's why he became such a good three-point shooter for us. Jalen brought a lot of energy. You know, he don't really say much around, like, off the court, but on the court, you're saying it's just, like, his presence. It makes us want to play even harder. And, uh, once you get to know him, uh, he's funny. I don't think people know, like, how funny he is, I guess, because he's, like, really quiet. He's outgoing. He likes to have fun. I, I like to rap sometimes, like, I freestyle sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> He's about the team. Uh, he's extremely coachable. Uh, he's he's a uh, we call him our kind of guy. I mean, it's been a great two years here. I love them. They became brothers to me. You know, uh, from from the ups and the downs. You know, they always have my back. You know, they always show me love, and I love them. My coaches too. My brother, 
I look up to him. I love my big brother. He really the one who got me playing basketball. You know, he started playing basketball, so I wanted to play basketball. He's a big reason why I am what I am today, why, why I'm playing basketball, you know, why I have aspirations to play professionally in the NBA or overseas. Yeah, I could see him playing at a lot of different places, uh, playing professionally overseas in Europe or maybe even the D-League, something like that. Um, but Jalen's a guy that's uh, going to continue to get better because of his work ethic. I haven't been overseas ever in my life. Well, I've been to, to the Bahamas, but uh, like Europe I haven't. So, um, but I've heard Spain is pretty. Uh, um, Italy, uh, Australia. So I mean, I'm, I'm thinking Spain. Chances of what? It's bittersweet. <laughs> I'm kind of sad. I mean, I'm a little sad about it, but I'm excited at the same time. You know, you're excited about what's next or what else can happen, but um, I'm definitely going to miss it. Uh, my experience at UTA has been great. Uh, I miss some great people, great teammates, great coaches. It's been a great experience. I'm definitely going to miss it. Camille Connor, UTA News. We wish Jalen and the rest of the graduating Maverick athletes the best of luck here in a couple of weeks. Now, Maria Hinojosa is a nationally renowned journalist and also the talk show host for NPR's radio show, Latino USA. Center for Mexican American Studies invited her to speak on the importance of Hispanic women in today's society. Javier Giribet has the details. In estos tiempos donde el tema de inmigración es tan, tan importante, ella ha sido una voz central que ha ido tratando, investigando y reportando ese tema durante, muchos, durante mucho tiempo. The way that she talk, Everybody, uh, I believe, uh, can relate it to that. As an immigrant, as a Latino, as a person that lives in, in this country, I think we, we are very familiar stories with uh, the ones that I sh uh, she shared. And she is a very, very important voice, not only as a journalist, but as a, as a community leader. Estamos aquí. Aunque no lo queramos aceptar, no, estamos aquí. Y... Sí, es una forma de protegernos, pero también es una forma de decir vamos a aceptar que echamos raíces y vamos a aceptar esa responsabilidad. ¿No? Y ahora más que nunca, viendo lo que está pasando, nosotros tenemos que ser dueños de este país. No para decir es de nosotros y váyanse, no, para nada, eso no es nuestra intención, sino para decir tenemos el derecho de estar aquí, con amor, con respeto, pero tenemos el respeto todo el derecho de estar aquí. Pensamos que sería ideal para este año uh, que compartiera con nosotros su perspectiva, incluyendo la perspectiva, la perspectiva sobre los cambios políticos que han ocurrido de, desde el noviembre pasado. Javier Gerbet, UTA News. This event was part of CIMA's annual speaker series. And well, that's all we have for you today on this 11th and final edition of UTA Spotlight Spring 2017. On behalf of our producer, Jenna Ramirez, and your anchor, Christian Guardado, we'd like to thank you for watching UTA Spotlight. Until next time.